What's up everyone? Jeremy Gerard from Mythic Customs here with one of my short customizing tutorial videos. Today's video, I'm just gonna kind of talk about some inspiration and about something that I think is important for customizers as they get deeper into the hobby and they start to to want to kind of do their own thing and create their own style. And that's quite frankly what I want to talk about is creating your own style. So when it comes to Mythic Legions customizing, or customizing in general, but certainly my channel focuses on Mythic Legions, so we'll, we'll focus there. Um, there's so much incredible work out there. It's almost daunting how much, uh, how many artists are creating really, really wonderful pieces under the umbrella of, of this hobby. Um, at the recent Legions Con event, it was humbling and amazing to just walk around that room and see all of the different different artists and all of the different styles and interpretations and that right there is one of the things that i think excites me most about this aspect of the mythic regions community of this this customizing hobby is all of those distinct styles um as a customizer, I think that there is incredible value in being able to have a distinct style of your own. Um, I know that people have told me that when they're scrolling through the Mythic Legions Cabal or through Instagram and you know one of my customs shows up, they almost immediately know that it's mine. Um, Oftentimes it's because it's a little critter because that's become a big part of my style. If you follow my work, and certainly if you're watching my channel, I assume you're familiar with my custom work, you know that I very, very much like doing the uh, anthropomorphic animal type characters, starting with that the Kitsune Fox that I created with Walter DeMarco and Len LaGuardia of Wolf King Customs. That has become a signature piece for me, and it's helped springboard a lot of other creations, um, badgers and turtles and mice and you name it. All kinds of different type of animal characters have been ones that that I've worked on and helped create. That's certainly part of my style. If you watch my videos, whether it's Mythic Conversations or this channel, you this these short customized tutorials, you know I talk a lot about dry brushing. It's kind of become a joke that, you know, I invented dry brushing, which of course I did not, but I use it all the time. I use it because it's really, really simple. And after all, I am an LBC, a Lazy Boy customizer, um, but it's very, very effective. And more importantly than both of those, I like it. That is a style, that is an effect I really, really like. So I think there's value in being able to decide what works for you. When I was at Legions Con, I had someone ask me a question saying, you know, with all this great art, with all these great creators in the space, do you ever get jealous? Um, and the answer is unequivocally no. I mean, the only time I ever get jealous is when someone executes such a great idea that I wish I would have thought of first. I'm like, oh, that is that is so genius. How didn't I see that recipe or that that combination? Um, but it's not really jealousy, really. It's it's not. It's just being appreciative of such a great idea and wishing that you would have come up with that because you want to execute on it, but maybe you don't want to copy someone else's work now that it's already out there, which if that's what you do, there's nothing wrong with that as well. I say to people all the time, the reason I shoot these videos, the reason I share my recipes is so fans who like what I do can follow those recipes and make creations of their own or use those as a springboard to do their, their own customs, their own style. Um, but I do not get jealous of people that are doing something that I'm not because that's not my style. That's not what I'm going for. Um, I love when I see artists that have a distinct style. And just like I mentioned, people have said to me that when they're scrolling through and they see one of my pieces, they almost immediately know it's me. There are other artists that I would say that is true for as well. I'll show you a few of what I mean here about different, different styles, because ultimately what I'm what I'm pushing you, what I'm, the purpose of this video is to get you as a customizer, if you're starting to get deeper into the hobby, start thinking, what is my style? Every artist, whether we're talking about customizing or any other form of artistic expression, they have a style. And 
I think that that is important. So let me show you what I mean here. First one I'm gonna show you is uh, Eric Miller. So Eric Miller is a wonderful artist. He was one of the exhibitors at Legions Con recently. Eric, the minute I see Eric's work, I know it's Eric's work. Eric does a ton of tribute type customs. This one here is a tribute to the Masters of the Universe figure of Tongue Lasher. You know, this one, another photo there. This one here is a tribute to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles character of the Rat King. Super cool interpretation using a variety of mythic legions and custom parts from a variety of different creators, actually, to create this super cool Rat King. Another one here. This is another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tribute. This one is to April O'Neil. Super, super cool. One of my favorite ones that he had actually at Legions Con was this one here, which is a tribute to Frankenberry of all things, right? The, the classic serial mascot, Frankenberry. Such a cool and innovative idea. The minute I see any of Eric's work, because he really does focus on these innovative tribute customs in the way that he paints he's got this really smooth style it just looks so incredibly clean so impeccable that the minute i see one of eric's pieces i immediately immediately know that it is eric that's one example let me show you another one here so this is one and this is a style that i've seen a couple different artists use but i i routinely see this artist who is his instagram is head sculpture custom so i'll bring you up to the top here um head sculpture custom i see a lot of customs out of i would say the asian market that seem to have this type of approach to it. Really soft features, got to assume they're using an airbrush for these as opposed to just a regular brush for the whole thing, but really, really soft features, beautiful, beautiful paint work on them. They don't actually look like stock Mythic Legion's heads to me, you know, which that's one of the things with my style. I really like my pieces to look as close to factory as possible possible, meaning I try to emulate some of the paint techniques that they use at the factory. These paint techniques are totally opposite of what they use at the factory, or if not opposite, they're at least di different. But I think it totally works because the artist that is doing these, this is the style that they really, really like to do. And it absolutely works for these pieces. You see a lot of that coming out, as I said, of the Asian market. And the minute I see them, I know the group of artists that those are probably from. Another one I'll show you here is one of my good friends, part of Team Wolf King. This is Emil Wickman, or Emil Wickman, as apparently his name is properly said. Um, Emil is both a sculptor and a customizer, a painter. And a lot of the times that he paints, you see that he's got these, and I'll, I'll zoom in here. His style, he's got a lot of these like washes. Um, just the way that he does them, it's the minute I see them, whether I see one of his sculptures, he's got really distinctive style to a lot of the pieces that he creates. This is a wonderful piece that he created um, called The Fallen, along with Lord Stephen Bishotti. They created a whole group called God's Fire that are put out through Wolf King Customs. And there's such a distinctiveness to his style, to the kinds of characters he creates and the way that he paints them, that the minute I see them, I know it's his. Probably some of ML's most popular customs are his Myth Vengers that we see right here. Very, very cool. Similar to what Eric I was just showing you does with the tribute type customs, but he really focused on these. Now, the painting style that he used on these isn't really what I see him use on a lot of his other pieces. And that's another principle that I want to I wanna point out here. That one of the cool things about having a style, I'm going to try to find another one of Emil's pieces that have more of that, that wash type of effect. Um, but one of the things I was going to say is when you have a style, one of the coolest things about having it is being able to break out of it from time to time. There's, I, I'm always impressed by someone that can work across lots of different styles. Um, but I like even more 
when someone has a distinctive flavor to their artwork and every once in a while they break out of that style and they do something new and they do something different because there's that moment of delight right when you see it and you're like oh this is wonderful and you don't recognize the artist right away because it breaks out of the style that you're used to but then when you look at who posted it and you realized that you know that artist and their work very well and this caught you by surprise there's that moment of delight and as the artist doing it there's that that sense of growth and that sense of breaking boundaries as well um i love to create within the the kind of style the the kind of techniques that i like to use but every once in a while it is wonderful to do something that is not typical of the work i would do because it allows me to stretch it allows me to to keep this hobby fresh because that is important when when you are in this hobby and you are customizing all the time i mean i do this work all the time i have people ask me how do you stay passionate how do you stay excited for this work and this is part of my secret part of my secret is finding a style that i love that i'm comfortable with and then occasionally being able to break out of that style to do something unexpected and different so a little secret for you right there let's see i'm back on emil's page and i will bring it back up here one moment so the mud thump characters that he created these goblins also that he created with steven these are a perfect example where you can see the type of uh the type of paints he often does he a lot of times if you look at ml's like teeth and everything in his gums it looks really really wet really it's got a life to it it's got you know a substance you can you can <laughs> you can see that moisture that's in there um that is a distinctive part of his work that i see literally all the time so that's another one one more i'll show you here very very different in this i do not know this artist personally but i have followed this artist who is listed as willie we um i followed this artist for a while uh very very distinctive i'm not into to Warhammer. I know nothing about Warhammer, but I've seen this artist post before that these are a combination of like Mythic Legions meets Warhammer. So I have to assume that he's clearly using Mythic Legions base bodies, but he's probably integrating some of the design styles from Warhammer. And he does stuff like this, which is horribly gross, totally unique, and very distinctive to his style. I'll show you a couple others. Yeah, this is like a perfect example of the kinds. A lot of times he'll use this, this particular helmet, which I always refer to as the Gorgo helmet, but he'll use this and it'll have all kinds of crazy horns coming off it. Very, very distinctive, very, very unique. In the minute I see one of these posts, I immediately recognize it as that artist. So that is what I'm suggesting to you today. As you start dabbling, and you start serious and you start wanting to i don't want to say make a name for yourself in the custom community because you know i think that just happens organically by putting out good work that people to recognize it the mythic legions community is so wonderful and it embraces creativity and ideas better than anything i've ever seen so putting out good work is the best way to get that work recognized but I really would encourage you to think for a little about what pieces you most like to do. What styles do you most like to do? Um, say that you really like, uh, for instance, myself, I like doing the dry brushing. I like doing dirty characters. I like doing armor that looks like it's been lived in, that looks like it's been through some battles. Um, I like it because it's easier to paint. There's more of a room for, you know, kind of failure. You, you get more, more leeway when you're painting things that are meant to be lived in and worn and dirty. Um, but also, it's just aesthetically what I enjoy on my shelf. Um, on the flip side, while I like the super clean nights that are in the line, I don't generally enjoy painting them. The level of meticulousness to get those really flat sheens, to get those really clean lines, it's something that I certainly have done and will continue to do, but it is not my favorite thing to do. And at the end of the day, the most important part of this customizing hobby is to have fun, to do things that you want to create and have fun in the process. So think about it. What is your style? Find your distinct style 
Be willing to break out of it every now and again, but make it your own. Put it out there into the world. Tell you what, I certainly can't wait to see what you make. Thanks for checking this video out. If you like videos like this, please give it a like. If you have any comments about what I'm talking about in this video, hit me up in the comments. I always look forward to answering those. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. I appreciate it. Till next time.